Which it would work better if we were like less wide as mm. humans. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we talk about the masks that we wear. It's a spooky podcast. Uh, only, only not really. Those are not the kinds of masks we're talking about. Although it is almost Halloween, so it, it does seem at least somewhat thematic. Spookily titled. Ooh. Uh, no, we're talking about masks as in the, the different sort of personas we adopt in social groups and in workplaces mm-hmm. and in various uh, social contexts in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so our icebreaker, mm-hmm. what is the mask you wear most often? Without a doubt, the Bouncer Man um, uh, mask is, Ryan is, is the one. Bouncerman? But yeah, Ryan Bouncerman Huckle, basically. Uh, <laughs> it, and it's, it's exactly what you would expect out of the Bouncer. It is fairly uh, stoic-faced, almost not pissed off, like clearly not angry, but it's somebody who doesn't have a sense of humor... Uh, very matter of fact, very even toned, that kind of look. The one that you don't really want to do anything to push buttons. But I do find that that mask slips as the night goes on. So it's mm-hmm. a lot more rigid when I first start work, when I first shift on. But then as the night's starting to go and you have to kind of go with the ebbs and flows of how people operate, it does get a little bit friendlier, but, you know, it's it's still somewhat bouncer man. Hmm. I think that that is, that is not what necessarily what people would expect of a, of a bouncer, if only because I think a lot of people have different understandings of, of like, the nature of bouncers mm-hmm. and the, like, the focus on fighting rather than, like, de-escalation. Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of a, a commentary on it. How many times we'll get, and that, this isn't just me, this is the, the team that I work with, how many times we'll get compliments of how we are so unlike bouncers that they're used to. Hmm. And that's largely a function of our clientele. Like The people who come to Chainsaw is a lot different than people who go to a club. Sure. It, they're a lot less aggressive on the whole, and so we don't have to be hyper-aggressive. But on the door, you have to present a certain image, and you have mm-hmm. to remind yourself that you have, you have a certain job to do. You have to screen people coming in for you know, intoxication as well as underage. So. Yeah. Neat. Um, mine is probably... I, like, work, work mask is, like, the obvious one because work mm-hmm. is, I mean, you spend 40, 50 hours a week there. Mm-hmm. Um, but mine, mine is probably, uh, like, energetic planning person. That's a mask you wear? Oh, yeah, totally. All I want to do is lay in bed and somehow manage to also play Skyrim. Yeah. Like, when I can play Skyrim VR while laying in my bed or in my easy chair, I you'll never see me again. I said uh, that may or may not be, like, literal naked, Jim, but that is that is the, the kind of naked self that you are, huh? It's, it's, no, it's just, like, I have a, I, I, I have a tendency to, to remain an object at rest. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's a tendency that dissatisfies me. So, so uh, I have a bunch of ways of sort of tuning that up so that I, so that I don't get into that. But, but yeah, like I, I, I adopt persona even, even when I am like at home alone um, mm-hmm. and sometimes especially then. Mm-hmm. And one of those is, yeah, just the, the idea of like, okay, I have a lot of things I want to do. I have, I have D and D stuff I want to do. I have writing stuff I want to do. I have videos I want to make. I have songs I want to write. And I will not stop wanting all of these things, mm-hmm. even if I don't do them. Mm-hmm. So, and I really, I, and, and it's easy to love the parts of this that are easy to love. Mm-hmm. It's easy to love, you know, sitting and talking and like, and like sitting with your friends and like braining out uh, an interesting video idea mm-hmm. or a song or something like that. Or a podcast pre-show. Yeah, but the the hard parts of that are the bits you do, or like all the work that goes into that, where you're like, oh, I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, and it's not even it's not even procrastination. It's just that the rest of life intrudes, and you are busy and tired, mm-hmm. and you know that kind of thing. And and so the mask I wear most often is is the idea that no, I am not tired. Uh, or I am tired, but I am the person who will get it done despite that. It is hard to be on all the time. Mm-hmm. And I guess since we've already alluded to it, and in the pre-show we kind of talked about bracketing it off, we we can bracket it off now having introduced the idea. We won't really talk about the unobserved naked self 
absent of social context. It's perhaps an interesting conversation, but it lies outside the scope of this podcast. Yeah, like there's 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 a there's a, a habit when when we talk about the different sort of masks and personas we wear as people to think about okay, but what about the real you? Sartre's authentic self you mentioned in the pre-show. Yeah, and and well, I mean, Sartre wouldn't tell you would tell you that you don't have one. He would tell mm-hmm. you that that authenticity is a thing that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, I there's a whole MRP about that, but <laughs> um, you know, the, the 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 reality of it is, I think, is that we live in we live in social context all the time, mm-hmm. and our our masks aren't aren't fake versions of us. We can certainly invent fake versions of us and, and, and pretend to be them. But the ones that we, we, we wear all the time, the, the sort of the personas, maybe the, maybe the better way to think of it, uh, I've been watching uh, Adam Koble play Persona 5. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Persona, you, you, you wear masks. Like, like they're literally embodied as masks in the game. Right. Um, but the, you you don't hide behind them. You draw upon them for strength mm-hmm. to accomplish specific tasks, mm-hmm. and that is maybe a better way of thinking about it. Yeah. And none of them are not you. Mm-hmm. They are all you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They are all the parts of you that you need mm-hmm. in this moment. So perhaps perhaps we're kind of getting into the weeds a little bit. Maybe we should take a step You're back right. then. <laughs> What are masks? Yeah, <laughs> you might be asking. Um, when we were doing the pre-show, I couldn't help but to reflect that Sarah and I have recently. Uh, she finished watching. I have not. Um, I think it's called Mind Hunters, a new Netflix series. But basically, it's kind of a fictionalized. Well, I'm assuming it's fictionalized. I don't know how close to the original story it it, it follows. Mm-hmm. Um, but the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation kind of pioneered the idea of categorizing and studying serial killers and psychopathology Mm -hmm. so it came out of the 70s um and so like when i watched the show it was very much like intro and second year philosophy course or sorry psychology courses and psychopathology and criminal profiling um but in one kind of key text that is not only referenced but actually the book is held up in the episodes Um, is John Gottman, uh, who was a sociologist, I believe, who talked about these masks that we wear Mm -hmm. when we interact with the world. It's just, it's it's so weird, Uh, kind of like a sidebar. How many times in your philosophical career has it been where you've been studying something in class and all of a sudden it helps illuminate something in your life? Mm. It happens all the time. There's connections everywhere, I find. And this is just one of those cases. I mean, as, as uh, as the... the uh, the other half of that is when we when we are thinking about a thing we are primed to find connections yes. to it everywhere. It's yes. the self fulfilling prophecy. Yes, I am, I, I am not. But yeah, yeah. Like masks masks in terms of of I don't even want to define them necessarily as sets of behavior because I think that's too limiting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it's weird to think of ourselves as only only behavioral, but but sets of of um, functions that describe they, they do help affect what we do mm-hmm. uh, they also almost certainly help affect how we think mm-hmm. uh, not just what we think but the, the lines along which we do so mm-hmm. uh, and how we feel in a lot of cases mm-hmm. uh, the best maybe the best example of that is is the idea of um, going going out with your friends mm-hmm. like you're gonna you're going to feel different ways. And depending on, if, especially if you're part of more than one, mm-hmm. like, friend group, mm-hmm. you're going to feel different ways and do different things depending on yeah. the kind of friend group you have. Like, as I, as, a, as a super dork, this is, like, especially true. Yeah. If I am hanging out with, with D&D nerds, I love hearing dice tales, like, tales of stuff that happened at the table. Mm-hmm. And, and D&D is... is Hilarious in that it is anything that happens at your D and D table, unless you weren't there, like, or, or unless you were there, is completely obscure, <laughs> even to other people who play the game, yeah. because there's so much context required that yeah. you just the story winds on and on and on. It's the infamous in every it always becomes the infamous nerd who just won't shut up, mm-hmm. and it's true and it's interesting. And I love I love the way people get excited about that, but like. Outside of like specific nerd context, I have zero time for that. I'm like, I have shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> I'm like, I just, I appreciate that excitement, but I have, I have things to do. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, I think it's too bad that perhaps we didn't do a little bit more research into, you know, the, the kind of sociological theories. But I think, I think one thing that you said really hits home the idea of like a function. It, it, it's, it's a function that definitely uh, affects both inputs and outputs. And in psychology, you have like it, the, the kind of classic triangle, the ABCs, your affect, behavior, and cognition, how you feel, how you behave, and how you think. Mm-hmm. And it really is like the masks filter the world coming in. And it, and it, it as a function, it, it alters sometimes in predictable ways, many times in predictable ways, the things that come out, whether it's, mm-hmm. it's well, it can the, be a way of managing, right? Like, and it can be a way of managing, and, yeah. and which, which, which can be like, I don't, I don't know that I want to like stress that masks are good or bad. I think, I, mm-hmm. I think that that's uh, they can be either, um, but they are, they are certainly normal. Mm-hmm. Like we, we all have them. We have lots of them. Um, we have an interest in both understanding them. Mm-hmm. Um, in ourselves and in and in the people we care about, mm-hmm. and yeah, I it's it's one of those, I, I don't know I get I I have had a lot of those conversations where people are like well well yeah but it's you know you need to be authentic you need to be the real you I'm mm-hmm. like, no 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 all all of the parts of me are the real me mm-hmm. um, it comes up a lot when um, in the LGBT community talking about uh, being being closeted. Mm-hmm. And or or the difference even between passing, mm-hmm. um, like I get coded as straight a lot, mm-hmm. uh, a lot more uh, or a lot less since I started wearing nail polish, but still a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's really sort of interesting to see the kinds of conversations I see once that coding is in place, and then the question is. How do I handle that? Mm-hmm. And, and 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 that's governed by a lot of other contexts. You know, I have I have a I have a straightsman mask. Uh, I don't use it much anymore, but I certainly <laughs> did for a long time. So that's probably a worthwhile segue into into the kinds of masks that we wear. Yeah, uh, in the pre-show, I think you you kind of hit it on where. Um there's you know five or six probably masks that everybody wears, and then the the kind of rejoinder that you know like oh no I don't wear masks we would we would both kind of agree that if you don't think you wear a mask it's probably you said because it's you're lying to yourself or my idea is uh, you haven't sufficiently stepped outside of your first person experience to be able to reflect critically on you as a third person. That's. It's, it's much more terrible than mine. I, <laughs> I, I wrote down in a notepad uh, on a notepad uh, I don't know, seven or eight years ago now um, the words "every day is Halloween," yeah. and that idea, that idea that that one of the th- for for me especially where I was then one of the things I did whenever I, I like put my my clothes on and my boots on and my my coat and, and that kind of thing was I I was constructing the person I was going to be when I was outside my house. And I had this this sort of idea um, of the kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And I've, I have, you know, lots, lots of things have changed since then. Mm-hmm. But the notion that, um, like, I wear masks every day is still prevalent. I'm just more comfortable in them. I think that's uh, probably the closest you come to the idea of the authentic self is whether or not it's it's a presentation of yourself that you are comfortable with or yeah. not. Yeah, like there are there are certain personas that fit yeah. better than other ones. And if you don't like it, that's the opportunity to, to modify it. So which, what are some of yours? Like we've talked about Ryan Bouncerman. So Ryan Bouncerman is definitely one. These We did not sit and name these before. <laughs> we are literally just, I'm just giving them names right now. Uh, I would say that this, so this mask, if, if you wanted to talk about a um, mask that is the thinnest um, and closest to perhaps my authentic self is I don't feel like I modify my behavior when I'm around my nerd friends mm-hmm. especially when we play board games and stuff like I don't feel like I have to act in a way that makes me included if anything I usually have to hide that behavior around other people mm-hmm. is, is, is more where I, I feel like a mask is going up um, there is a somewhat of a mask that I wear at the college um, because it's a lot more friendly and easygoing and yep. optimistic. Um, 
because I like the idea of you know being a person that helps solve problems. Um, but also, like you have two jobs and you work in, and and they're two in two sort of very different contexts in some ways. Yes. Yeah, so as a support staff, I am expected to support the administration, and support faculty. Whereas a faculty member, you're expected to be a teacher. Yeah. Um, and and that being a teacher and standing in front of pupils has a much different um, mm-hmm. you know, kind of social connotation than than it would otherwise. Um, the first time I noticed the idea of me wearing a mask was when I was reflecting on how I am with certain kinds of family members. So mm. I was different at home than I would be with my grandparents. And I think everybody, I think up until maybe your teenage years, um, that's kind of like socialized into you from your parents of, you know, being respectful or acting a certain way. And then, and then I think as you're relationship with your grandparents matures over time you you that that kind of presentation changes like i'm a little bit more joking and and whatnot with my grandmother now than i would have been before Hmm. um but that was growing up i noticed that how i behaved in strathroy with my parents versus how i behaved with my grandparents in thamesville i noticed that i would be two different kinds of people in those houses Hmm. um so that's my earliest i I can't put a a year on it or an age but um that was the first time i noticed so i mean where where are some of the masks you were you were you were a podcast among masks we we don't don't, like project our voices and 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 actually now that that kind of thing now i think about i hadn't even thought about that but podcast man is is kind of the natural evolution of karaoke host yeah because yeah. because I, it was it was something that i talked about all the time that i had a stage presence i mm-hmm. i uh, a lot of times it was cashed out as a stripper man of you know <laughs> good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to chainsaw like you, you change the the cadence and you change the intonation you change the tone of your voice yeah. um and you're expected to to be charismatic on stage and I am perhaps less charismatic on the podcast <laughs> because I don't feel like I have to act as much Fair. when when I'm with you Fair. Uh, but there Aww. is yeah there is certainly a presentation side of it um, and before I kick it over to the masks that you wear I perhaps want to give one more anecdote um, in university there was a man who taught the kind of dark subjects of, of psychology uh, his name was Chris Burris and so he taught uh, psychology of evil, psychology of death and dying, um, he, uh, the dark side of sexuality were a couple of the courses in the course calendar that he taught. And there was one time in the lectures where he was talking to us, and he he's probably one of my favorite lecturers. Like of all of my favorite lecturers at the at the university, they were almost always in the psychology department. Well, see so if we can find a link uh, and throw it in the show notes. Sure. And so in one of the courses, and I don't remember which one it was, but he was talking about this exact idea of, of the outward presentation of the self. And he says, and he, he was always kind of loud and fun in a kind of redneck way. I mean, he always wore a black turtleneck and he always had a mullet, you know, party or uh, business up front and party in the back. And and he was very, he was very open and honest about that. You know, it's not like he, he's like, no, I don't have a mullet kind of deal. And he, so he was talking about the idea that in front of students in class, he is one way. But if you go to talk to him during office hours, you would think he's an asshole because he was very introverted, very quiet, um, and sometimes it felt like you were bothering him. And it, he, he kind of admitted that he's not really being bothered by it. It's just in a different so, social circumstance. Yeah. And uh, like con- context is everything. Context is everything. And this was the first time that this I, I took this as a lesson from him that helped me with uh, bouncing or karaoke or other things is when he was in front of people as a teacher. He had a job to do, and that gave him the courage to be able to stand up and be something that he felt like he was not normally. Mm-hmm. And he became very comfortable in that role. And I remember learning that lesson. I've kind of embodied it because, uh, I guess this will segue into, sorry, sorry another <laughs> another, um, another um, uh, anecdote, but I went to Oktoberfest last weekend at Bingham's. It's like 5,000 people, and I did not want to be there. Um, I was very, very unpleasant to be around, to say the least. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's 5,000 people. People are drinking. I don't, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be around the people. I was very uncomfortable with going because even though it's in the city, it's kind of far out there. I wasn't driving there. We were taking a cab. 
And so you're kind of stuck there until you can get a ride home. Yeah. So there's no sense of control in the situation. I don't like drinking in front of other people. I prefer to drink by, like when I consume alcohol. I prefer to be either in a comfortable location like Chainsaw or in Uptown Waterloo, or I prefer to be at home or with friends. Okay. Right? Um, so I don't like being out and about. And I have the bladder of a fruit fly, and I'm kind of self-conscious <laughs> about being a big guy having to constantly run back and forth to the washroom. And so I just did not want to be there. But I was reflecting on it that if I was there as a bouncer, I would have been perfectly comfortable there. Yeah, you know, you know, you do. You have a, you have a thing. You have a, you can establish a routine. Yes, exactly. So, so these are the various masks that I wear, and I have certainly monopolized the conversation. So let's <laughs> kick it over to you, Jim. Sure. I mean, like work mask is obvious. Um, and I think I think everybody's got one. It's and it's. And we accept that I think as a, as a, a social construct that, mm-hmm. that like like a, a normal thing that you, the person you are at work is not the same as the person you are at home. Mm-hmm. Like you 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 call on different strengths, you call on different functions, you have different priorities, mm-hmm. um, and that makes and that makes total sense. Yeah, I have a I have another sort of like YouTubesman mask Mm -hmm. not not just for for and 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 yeah it's mostly for my benefit Mm -hmm. it is where like i act as my personal coach and i'm like no no no, don't just play video games all the time (laughs) do do all of the work that is associated with this thing that you like doing because there is work and it is meaningful Mm -hmm. um I find uh, dating is a really interesting sort of context yeah. for, for, for masks. Like, um, especially, um, I did a bunch of online dating for a while. It was super fun. Uh, mm-hmm. I like meeting new people. And, and, and uh, but you always get that, like, especially, especially when meeting somebody for the first time where you're like, all right, how, how do I deal with this? And, and, and you know. Um, like not not just in the sense of taking precautions for uh, for for safety, like both theirs and yours, but uh, in the in the sense of like how how much of what I am and who I do, or what I am and who I do, um, <laughs> what I do and who I am, um, do I do I sort of want to present in a way that also like makes sure that I am I am listening and 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 I I remember I I, I settled on. Uh, High functioning weirdo, probably not a murderer. <laughs> as my as my sort of go to vibe, <laughs> like, yeah. I am I am the person with a big studio full of computers in their house and a big art wall that that isn't really anywhere that anyone can see it unless you're a camera. Mm-hmm. But I don't have a murder basement. No. Or a murder garage. No. Um, but yeah, to, um, like, but and, and not just uh, not just dates, but uh, travel. Mm. Um, I have a mandatory extrovert policy when I travel, mm-hmm. where I have to be on. I have to be meeting new people and talking to new people, um, because otherwise, I get withdrawn and I start constructing routines that make it matter of fact. I remember that from like, Scotland. Oh yeah, yeah. like 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 I, it, I will get like if if given the opportunity, I will just construct routines uh, in this unfamiliar place until like I'm impossible to interact with. Well, I, I don't remember. It's, I kind of I see what you're talking about with that last part of it, but uh, more the the mandatory extrovert policy. I remember observing that in you and kind of being blown away, but in a, like a, a good way of and kind of like an awe of just how easily you were able to interact with new people mm. and you know be make them like you i felt like almost everybody liked you a lot more than they liked me uh <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't a jealousy thing i just i just remember being in awe of like wow like and i i, I chalked it up to oh jim's a couple years older than me he's a little bit more you know worldly than i am sure uh, of being able to interact with people in a foreign country no, no, i have a i have a mandatory i took a, I t- when i went to vidcon i took the train for four days across uh, america and it was super fun uh, I don't know that I would repeat it, but it was super fun. I flew back, yeah. but I was like, I had seatmates the whole way, and I'm like, I gotta like like if they're a person who is into a conversation, I uh, I'm like, you're gonna have that conversation mm. because otherwise you're gonna go to this con where you don't know anybody and you're not gonna meet anybody and you're just gonna like take up space and feel kind of sad. Mm-hmm. 
Um, well, I know that feeling. <laughs> I guess that it's that you know, like venturing into the unfamiliar is su- is super frightening, and given the opportunity, I need to make sure that I don't withdraw. Mm-hmm. Especially because the people I'm around usually when I'm traveling are people who will respect that withdrawal. Mm-hmm. Like they aren't the people who are going to drag you out to do something. They're going to be like, oh, okay, no, that's we we are also introverts. We understand. Go do what you got to do. But I'm like, no, no, no. What I have to do is the thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I mean, travel is an obvious one. GMing is an obvious one for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I focus a lot more on improvisation. Uh, I'm a lot like when at the gaming table, I'm a lot snappier. I'm a lot funnier, one might say. But like, I'm always like, like it's really it's 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 a really sort of fast, sharp version of myself. I would I would make an argument that it's probably the best version of myself. The one that you, if was your authentic self, you would choose to be? Mm, I don't know that I would go that far. Okay. Because it's also the scheming part of myself. Like, as your, as your GM, I will I will bald-facedly lie to you. <laughs> um, if I think that it'll be more interesting for for you to, to find out in a different way, and you botched your role, I would just bald-facedly lie. Yeah. I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, student gym was an interesting time. Uh, I spent I spent five years, six years learning how to fit into that, mm-hmm. and that probably brings us into like the idea of constructing masks or constructing mm-hmm. personas, which is the, you know we talked about it in the pre-show as when we're in unfamiliar places or unfamiliar situations. You and I certainly like, I don't think mm-hmm. that this is a universal property, at least not to the extent that I think you and I rely on it mm-hmm. as people who really value internalizing systems and rules and routines and like like I make fun of you a lot for that but I do the same kind of stuff yeah but less well yeah, there's <laughs> there's a sense of comfort in knowing your place knowing your purpose knowing what's expected of you and yeah. what you're ex- like what to do yeah and 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 when when in an unfamiliar situation um, I know the first the first thing that I try and do is is Find out what the rules are. Find mm-hmm. out what the norms are. Find mm-hmm. out what the and this this can be good because it helps relieve anxiety. It helps uh, me feel like I've adapted to it. It can also be bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think everyone's got that story of when they were a kid and then like when they, they they entered a new friend group and were super shitty for a while because their friends were super shitty. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, this is just what we do here. And it's like, okay, but but. What we, what you do there is still what you are doing, mm-hmm. you know. Like there's there there's the social context right now. It's like the idea of being out out with the boys mm-hmm. and the kinds of of toxic like burdens of toxic masculinity that carries. Right. Those are real. The consequences for that are real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I, when I say that our masks are all ourselves, it means we are responsible for the things that we do when we occupy them we don't get to walk away from them Mm -hmm. um but for me like my i had a really super interesting mask construction thing uh last year or earlier this year actually uh because i went to therapy Mm -hmm. for the first time as an adult Mm -hmm. in yeah for the first time as an adult um it was super cool um and but I but I sat down in this room with this person that I didn't know, and I knew like I knew sort of what I wanted to talk about, but I didn't know how to talk about that, and that was part of what I was what I went to try and learn. But I'm sitting there and I'm like, I need to construct a version of myself for for this situation. But because of the nature of, of therapy and, 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 and sort of the way, like in order for it to, to, to be effective in, a, in accomplishing your goals, I'm like, this needs to be the most honest version of myself, like the most candid, mm-hmm. the most frank version of myself that I, that, I can, that I can muster because I am literally paying this person to listen to me tell the truth. Mm-hmm. And like, 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 there's no value in 
disguises or misdirections or avoidance or anything like there's no value in that and and there's like that stuff still happens because human beings yep. conversation yeah you want to be liked you don't want but, to be viewed negatively and yeah i don't really care too much about that <laughs> <laughs> but but it's no it's just it's just because like some stuff is hard to talk about mm-hmm. and and but wherever i'm like wherever you can recognize that just just confess to it and i i am a i am a i i can i can say for certain that i am a super different person in that room than i am in almost any other context like i walk back a lot of sentences i'll get halfway through something and i'll be like actually no i'm saying this wrong mm-hmm. i need to walk back and start from the beginning again mm-hmm. um, which i don't do on the podcast because we only have 40 minutes <laughs> <laughs> one take <laughs> <laughs> So what about you? Like, 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 does that does that jive? Do you find yourself in in unfamiliar situations, like the like the Bingamans thing, or, or highly familiar? I guess I guess Bingamans isn't unfamiliar. It's highly familiar, but you're there in the wrong context. Yeah. Um, so, in line with my kind of interjection into what you were just saying, I think mine tends to be motivated on uh, to to try to connect with people. Mm-hmm. I do like and want to be liked by other people. That's fair. Um, I'll allow it. Yeah, it's I, I like you. You know, when when I know that people don't right. like me, it, there is some small part of me that it is bothered by that because mm-hmm. I, I feel like like there's what what did I do that you know to offend the person or what did I do that was so um, misaligned with with the kind of person that they are, right? So so th- there is a small sense that bothers me. So when I when I'm talking with people and I find this um, you know, when you're when I'm giving a lecture or when I'm uh, in a meeting with people and I'm trying to explain concepts, th- this is a tool that I use. Of I start talking and then I try really hard to read mm. cues, uh, mostly you know facial cues, but even body cues and stuff. I'm trying I'm trying to read in terms of whether or not what I'm saying is effectively being communicated. Mm. The idea of taking the idea here and putting it there. You know, there's so many steps that can be broken in that chain and so that's one of the tools that i use in constructing you know how i am in front of the people is is you know whether or not that communication is being is being uh, passed along effectively but another one that i found that i use at the bar and this is this is so the way i am on the podcast and the way i'm at the bar is vastly different from the person that i was when i or the person that i presented myself as when I first entered university. Very, very shy, very much uh, a residence person. I would, I credit working at a bar as being very, very useful in, in my career because Fair. if you can learn to interact with people at a bar, uh, especially in a mixed group bar, like yeah, Chainsaw's fairly homogenous because it's, you know, university students, but you still have a, a different swath of people coming through from different backgrounds and experiences. And so being able to connect with people and, you know, become chummy with them, it, it, it was very useful for my career. And I find that, um, it, well, A, if you know how to convince a person to leave the bar when they're drunk and them <laughs> not swing at you is, is a useful life tool. <laughs> yeah. But, but learning how to change how I, how I talk, what I talk about, the words that I, that I use, the tone that I take, even the kind of colloquialisms, I learned that at the bar. I, and, and I learned it at um, when I was in the gambling lab. When you go out to the casino, you can't talk to people as an academic because it, it offends them, it alienates them, it puts you above them, and you can't have a genuine human connection that way. <laughs> you have to learn how to adopt their speech patterns or learn to talk about the things that they're interested in to well, make those connections. Well, it's interesting. Like, like, like I, I think, I think there's, we get into a distinction that we are not going to dig into today, <laughs> which is, which is the distinction between, um, wearing a persona as a part of yourself mm-hmm. and purposely adopting affectations to accomplish a task. Yes, I, and I, I like, yeah. I, and, and I think that there's like there's a there's a very real and very interesting distinction there, mm. where where yeah, like we 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 get into the idea of of if I if I perform this way rather than if I emphasize this aspect of myself, mm. if I perform the thing that I would normally do in this way, mm-hmm. it will. Um, 
it will function. That's in some ways like like in, in different social contexts. T- contexts. Uh, that's where we get into things like code switching. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of there's there's lots of writing on. Uh, we'll dig some up for the show notes, but there's lots of writing uh, done by people in marginalized groups mm-hmm. about the way that they have to modify their behavior in order to um, be accepted or to succeed in. Um, Social contexts that are dominated by by oppressors. Mm-hmm. So there, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of writing on that, and it's it's super interesting stuff. But it is, I think, not the topic for a podcast with two six foot tall white guys. On yeah, that. yeah. So I, I'll kind of cap off that that those are tools that I use. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I'm I'm a little hard pressed on the spot to try to think of. Mo- the new masks that are being developed. I don't think that I'm kind of like all masked out in life, um, but I find that there a lot of times now they're modifications of existing masks. Totally, yeah. I mean, you you are changing as a person, and they're, yeah. and they're going to change with you. Like I'm, I could like engagement has mm-hmm. has. I can tell you for sure that like the 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 way that you frame your relationship now is different. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly in conversation. Um, and it seems to, like it seems to make you much happier. Mm-hmm. It's easier to connect with people. Yeah, I find I find uh, rather than using masks to hide myself, I find masks more proactive and pro-social. That I, I it helps me connect with people more. You're like Batman. I am like Batman. The mask is your real face. Oh. <laughs> I just, to be honest, earlier in the conversation, I, I imagine when I listen back to this, I'll find that part where I wanted to be like I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that part was that part was right then. No, it was much earlier. It was like twenty minutes ago. Oh, man. <laughs> so yeah, um, leave us comments about your masks um, down below. Uh, you can find us on uh, all the social media, which is in the doobly doo. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also find us on Patreon to support uh, this podcast and the streams and all kinds of other um, future endeavors. Mm-hmm. And you can find us at wootsyride mm-hmm. So uh, be who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, when you need to be and uh, stay awesome stay awesome I'm Huck no we're not doing that we're not doing that just change the outro now episode 19 we just change the outro there we go (laughs) that's our outro outro that's our outro outro I'm Huck (laughs) that's Jim he refuses to admit it (laughs) 